everyone to Fireside Chat at hey. the Fox Hollow. My name is Skylar. I'm Keelan and this is our guest. Hey, I'm Connor. So today we're going to be talking about health and fitness, a really popular New Year's <laughs> resolution that everyone thinks that they're going to do in the next year, but then it doesn't really happen. Five. Maybe it takes five days. <laughs> yeah, five, five to seven days and then you're done. Yeah, like, oh yeah, well, I did month, it, I'm healthy, good the job. gym is full and then by February everybody is not about that life. <laughs> Which is a good time to go. Like, you can be as stupid as you want at the gym when nobody's there. <laughs> you know, you I love going to the gym when nobody's there. Put weights on your legs, duct tape them, and walk on the treadmill. It works. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about living your goals every day and every week instead of getting to the end of the year and being like, why didn't I succeed at any of the goals I was trying to accomplish this year? How do you succeed at such a lofty goal as I'm going to be a healthier and more fit person and lose tons of weight? Because that's not a goal. That's not a measurable, achievable goal. That's a very vague aspiration. And it's, it's just not, a want. It's like a yes, wish. Yes, it's not going to happen. It's like wishing, oh man, I wish I could fly. And then... How are you going to fly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so before we get started, there's a few nuggets of wisdom going forward because health and fitness is something that people are really self-conscious about. This is a very personal subject and everyone has their own personal journey. So the first nugget of wisdom is love yourself unconditionally. Be your own best friend. The second is no matter what, it's going to be okay. Give yourself grace in the process. You're gonna make mistakes. The important thing is that you learn from them. And then the third thing is to have moderation in all things. <laughs> Don't take anything too far. Start slow. Don't overexert yourself. Yeah, that sounds nice. It's a good thing for everybody to know. Everybody to know, yeah. Okay, so our wow. first subject is food and nutrition and the thing that i've found is really difficult when you don't meal prep because what ends up happening is that then you make excuses for why you're not eating healthy nutritious foods it takes too long it's too expensive it's too hard i don't have time to make right. dinner every night i can't well it's so simple to throw a pizza in an oven <laughs> no, why would you skip that, guys? So, they meal prep is really important um, for actually saving you time and money, and it's more nutritious. So, I love meal prepping big soups and stir fries to eat throughout the week because otherwise, I fall back on, at least me personally, I can fall back on frozen meals and those. Amy's vegetarian meals are decent for being frozen meals, but that's definitely not what you want to be eating for lunch every day. No, that's and not it's healthy. not the most nutritious option. Or the cheapest option. <laughs> no, and talking about that, it's not always... You don't always have to meal prep. Some people meal prep three meals a day and two snacks and have it all set out for the entire week. That's crazy. Or you can make like a couple meals that you know that you'll need to eat. Like say you're busy on like Tuesday and Thursday, but you're free to make dinner Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So meal prep mm -hmm. for the days that you don't have time to make food that night. Exactly. So one of my goals going into the new year is to meal prep every Sunday evening to make most of the meals for the next week, especially lunches to take to work in mm. school if you're in school, because those are definitely the most stressful. I make breakfast every morning, but lunch is definitely the one that you got to take with you wherever you're going, and you don't mm. want to end up um, in the situation, especially if you're a young professional and your coworkers are all like, let's go out to lunch every day. That's both really expensive and really unhealthy for you too so you definitely want to kind of be the lame person <laughs> well, are there any back is something bad about skipping lunch is that, that bad so we can talk a little bit about intermittent fasting it's not something that i personally do some people 
do it to great success. Sometimes I do it unintentionally. If you're not hungry, yeah. you don't would need to force yourself to eat, and that's okay. If you don't eat in the morning, that's fine. Other people wake up completely starving. They have to have something to start their day. Other people, they can wait until like 11 or 12 to mm. eat something, and then they just eat a little bit of a bigger lunch instead. But that's the thing. You still get, with intermittent fasting, it's very preference-wise. Uh, there's some studies Quotation with it. Quotation mark studies. Quotation mark studies. It's hard to study. But health and nutrition everybody's right. different. If you vibe with a different Ooh, style of diet or, you know, if you follow the keto diet or something, mm -hmm. that works for some people, but for others it does not, and it could send them spiraling down with their health, where it could send you flourishing, and... Each, Everybody's different. Each person's body is different. That's, yeah. That should have also been a nugget of wisdom at the beginning. Well, boom, it is It is right I, now. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Nugget of information. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> di everybody's bodies are different. If you didn't know, your own style is different. If right. The one thing that you don't want with intermittent fasting, and this is the dangerous part of it, um, is that if you go fasting for most of the day, you might end up binge eating later. So as long as you're not binge eating later, you're doing it in a healthy way, then that's fine. But Sweet. And on the other end of the spectrum, you don't want to be um, depriving your body of nutrients and caloric needs throughout the day because obviously then that's going to be um, another unhealthy uh, eating disorder. So moderation. Moderation. Moderation in everything. Things. Yes. So, Including and experiment eating. with things too. And if you don't feel good eating a certain way or eating certain types of food, don't do that to yourself. Hmm. But I think the important thing about food and nutrition is that it's easy in theory and it can be hard in practice. So <laughs> simple, simply, you just need to eat more vegetables, eat some more fruits, um, healthy fibrous grains and you need to uh, not eat as much processed food and sugars. And, and if you do, you're not a terrible person. No, you can that, have you some can. sometimes occasionally in, as a treat. That's the thing. In but moderation. In moderation, yeah. You can eat healthy most of the meals of your day and if you don't allow yourself to have that cookie at the end of the night as a reward for, hey, I did so good, let me eat a cookie <laughs> and treat myself, then you're going to end up so hating studies actually your, show you should not um reward yourself with the same thing that you're trying to modify they don't think so that's you a good shouldn't thing. yeah you shouldn't reward healthy eating with an unnutritious food the healthy eating should be the reward in and of itself but if you're like hey i haven't had a treat all week and i i'm at like a party or something and you can make that choice that I'm going to deprive myself of this cookie because I, I think it's unhealthy. Or you can be like, you know what, it's okay to have one cookie. Then I'd say probably just eat the cookie. But if you're binge eating cookies because you're feeling sad or you deprived yourself for a month of eating cookies and then you just snapped, that's no good. No. That's but like... you should never reward yourself with the unhealthy behavior that you're trying to modify. Just allow it to happen the thing is it's not it's not a diet you should never you should go ease on a into diet it. ease into your lifestyle you're turning it into a lifestyle basically. yeah and you yes. should ease into it like Healthy going into habits. like going into a cold pool you should like ease into it yeah never stop anything cold turkey never start anything full force you're going to slowly integrate these habits into your life like if you want to eat healthier you're going to add a portion of vegetables to every meal that you eat. That's yeah. the way to do it. Don't just like take out everything that you're used to. Don't take out all your sugars. Don't take out all your carbs. Don't oh, carbs take out the things that humans need to survive. So we need carbs to survive. <laughs> so it's always funny when, when people say, oh, fats are evil or, oh, carbs are evil. They're not. We're They're important. We're going to talk about macros a little bit. The micronutrients, I think, speak for themselves, and we're not going to go into depth with that. But macronutrients are really important, and you need to have a good balance of them, depending on what you're 
doing. Um, Lifestyle-wise, exercise-wise. Yeah. So, obviously, you're going to increase your protein intake if that's what you need to do. Or if you're diabetic, you know, you may very well need to decrease your carb intake and that kind of thing. But there are healthy carbs, fats, and proteins. And there are also more unhealthy carbs, fats, and proteins. You just have to know which food am I getting these macronutrients from that are good. Like, broccoli is a carb. Oh. Broccolis are carbs. Okay. Yes. Vegetables are carbs. They are healthy carbs. Mm-hmm. Wow. Cupcake is also a carb. It's, it's also a healthy carb if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All the healthy stuff goes into it. <laughs> so... And, like, if you think about olive oil is a healthy fat. Butter in moderation is okay, but too much butter is obviously an unhealthy fat. Paladin. And you can also see protein. So, um, tofu and, and fatty fish or, like, lean meat are good proteins, but if you're eating processed pepperoni, is probably not a healthy protein. <laughs> so you can see that each macro has healthy and unhealthy versions of each macronutrient. Should should you just keep it raw then? Like with your protein and and your carbohydrates, should you keep everything unprocessed? It's hard to do. Not necessarily. So some people are really into raw food diets, but the really important thing to note about vegetables in particular, um, some vitamins are activated when cooked and others are only present when raw so if you're shooting for a certain nutrient micronutrient or um antioxidant tomato is a really good example there's a an antioxidant that's only present when it's raw and there's an antioxidant that's only present when cooked so if you want to get both of those you'll need to eat both raw and cooked tomatoes you can't just do all cooked or all raw food diets It just depends on what you're looking for in your diet. But again, the important thing to note with nutrition is find vegetables and fruits and other healthy foods that you like and incorporate them into your diet and create those healthy habits. And just be the person who eats healthier food. Don't make it a punishment because it shouldn't be. And there's so many terrific recipes and resources online that you can look up to make your food taste better so that you're not adding unhealthy components to compensate for taste. You need to manifest what you want to be. You don't think, I want to be a healthy person. Mm-hmm. You say to yourself, I am a healthy person. And you say that to yourself yes. every day, and that's part of the self-love part of it. You need to find your identity and help manifest who you want to be. Exactly. That's what creates healthy habits in the first place that are long-term sustainable. So the last part of food and nutrition that we want to cover is hydration. Oh. Um, So there's a lot of misconceptions about hydration out there too. So you definitely want to stay hydrated because I feel like a lot of people are not hydrating enough, but then there's also that misconception where you have to drink a certain amount each day and that is also not accurate because there is no specific amount that every single person like you don't not every single person needs to drink eight glasses of water a day like that myth was put forward by water companies to sell bottled water so you know don't listen to that hyperbole um but we're going to talk about starting your day off with a full glass of water Oh, yeah, that's good for your immune system. Your metabolism, your... your... Everything. Everything. Yes, it's good for your health (laughs) overall. Yes, it can help prevent getting sick, probably. I mean, it's because when you go to sleep at night and you wake up in the morning, that's presumably eight hours of not eating or drinking anything. So your body is going to welcome that water tremendously. So this is something that I had incorporated into my daily life last year Um, and it's because I needed to take a medicine that has to be taken with a full glass of water first thing in the morning so that forced me to start that that habit Um, but it feels really great 
Or is it refreshing? Or when I wake up in the morning, my throat's all like closed. closed. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to say closed, but yeah, it feels dry. And drinking water exactly. is uncomfortable. Well, yeah, and so there's a few things that can make it a little bit better if you're not used to drinking water in the morning, or if you feel like it's a little rough. Um, you can add fresh squeezed lemon or lime, Ooh. lime, um, turmeric, cucumber, t- turmeric, ginger. Um, there's plenty of different. Ginger's good. I like ginger. juices. Yeah. yeah, to make it taste more refreshing, make it easier to drink, and that also allegedly boost your metabolism and help you wake up in the morning and also have other nutritional help you filter benefits. out all the bad things in your body too like through your kidneys yeah yeah some of those can help your kidneys and and liver yeah filter, I, I have one kidney things. so i think that's important oh yeah that's tremendously important then drinking water but you're conscientious <laughs> about taking care of Sh- sure. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all. Actually, I, I may have a water bottle with me, but it's empty, and um, I don't drink as much water as I should. So this is a really great goal going forward because... Everybody should take it, even if you don't like New Year's resolutions. You should just drink water. Yeah. Stay healthy, drink or, water. And, and another thing, if you're not too into drinking water, and especially in the winter, I love drinking green tea. It's also hydrating, and it has antioxidants in it. Um, Just be careful with juice because it doesn't contain fiber, and it does have a lot of sugar in it, but flavored water, Mm. I'm not a big fan of, but, you know, if that's what you have to do to drink water, then you should. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure it doesn't have any extra stuff in it. Just not good for you. Hide the vegetables in the soup, okay? Like with water, find find a way to drink it. You can hide it as something else. Like, oh, it's a lemon flavored beverage. It's lemon water, but yeah, there's some that have like um vegetable, like their vegetable drinks or something. I've never tried them before though, so you can always like, do that celery juice trend that's it. going around. I don't know about that. That sounds yeah. really gross. Celery <laughs> juice is supposedly gross, but celery it's does consist of bitter, mainly water. Yeah. Um, and it's it's fibrous. So, so just if you're on water. that trend this it's not year, not fibrous when you juice it though. It loses its fiber. Content, so then, what's allegedly. the point of it? There's different debates about that. Depends on how well you strain yeah. it. Yeah, but if you're not, it's fiber is like you eat it. It's roughage, and then you have happy, healthy poops. And my philosophy is, a happy person, happy pooper. There you go. You got good poops. You got a happy person. But. What if you have a happy person who, you know, are you happy if you have unhappy poops? No. Exactly. No, you're not. Nobody's <laughs> eat happy. Eat fiber. Eat your roughage. Okay, good. But that's all what's your the celery water there? have to do with that? Because you're not eating okay, so anything. Celery is you're very drinking. fibrous, so if you eat celery, you're getting fiber and roughage. But then but you if drink you it. Juice it. It's nothing. You probably lose a lot of the fiber part of it. I'm not sure. So then I don't drink celery. Water. I don't drink do water, celery. I'm not, celery. Celery. The two I'm not a celery are scientist. <laughs> there's lots of there's a lot of trends and claims to a health healthy life in general and just being a healthier person. Oh, if you just drink a glass of celery juice every morning <laughs> well, and then you go off and juice. you know I whatever. I don't think that's gonna work. Like the jelly juice. But you can't just stuff. drink celery juice and then eat Twinkies. Yeah. That doesn't That's the thing. Work. It's it's a lifestyle. And whatever you can't you can't just change one thing and be a healthier person and you can't rely no. on just taking like vitamins. Mm-hmm. You still need to get them through the food that you eat. So you can't like take vitamins and then eat like three meals at McDonald's and be like, ah, I'm fine. I took my vitamins. I have all my nutrients I need. I'm healthy. Yeah, because yeah, your no. your heart is not going to be happy. No. And your body in 20 years is going to hate you. <laughs> so speaking dead. of heart health, we're going to move on to exercise. So with this, again, remember, we're going to start simple and then we're slowly going to increase over so, time because it's a really hard habit to create and sustain. Especially if you go to the gym. That's why you need to start it off as just a habit. Just Mm -hmm. going to the gym. 
Yeah, so I have heard of of people who were more focused on starting the habit and they went mm. to the gym um, just for 10 minutes and left. They did like a couple exercises and left. And the whole point of it was just to make sure they weren't making excuses for why they couldn't go in the first place, that it's not about the working out part that was important for establishing habits. It's about going to the location, proving to yourself and starting that habit it makes it feel more natural. And then you're not making excuses about, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym or, oh, I'm too tired to go. No, now it's just ingrained. It's part of your schedule. You have to remember, you can always work out at home. You can do mm -hmm. different variations of different exercises all at home. You can run up and down the stairs if you have them. You can go and walk around the block. Anything. Push up, sit up, squats. Yes. Squats are very good. Oh, anything. Squats. You can do any variation Planks. of anything. If you have a couch or <laughs> table at your house, good you can enough. you can do incline stuff. You can you can do stuff even without weights. Starting out at home. So yeah, even just taking daily walks, like walking thirty minutes a day is really important. You have to start somewhere. And that's and really wanna, relaxing too. Mm -hmm. If you want to go somewhere, like to the gym to work out, you should definitely start the habit of going there. So you don't right. make excuses later on in the year like, oh, well, I'm tired, so I'll just not go. And then eventually you'll be tired every day and you just won't go. And then your New Year's resolution will go. And that's another thing. If you, if you are tired and then don't go to the gym, you're going to continue to be you'll tired. You'll be more yeah. tired. Because if you go to the gym, you're going to be more energetic. Yes, it is. It reinforces itself. You have more energy when you go to the gym, and you also sleep better. And it makes you feel you better. You might be sore, but you will it's feel a good better. Sore. It's something as simple as um, so. I I at work. I'm on the ninth floor, but I will take the stairs down to the bathrooms up. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but <laughs> I, I well, definitely. No one's gonna I know. I definitely. I use the bathrooms on like the sixth or seventh floor like i will go up and down the steps so that's multiple times a day that i'm using the steps just to use the bathroom instead of using the bathrooms on our floor because it's just like a little bit of extra workout it gets you to move also there's like nobody in those bathrooms so it's like it's really relaxing is it clean poop. yeah yeah, oh, happy, <laughs> yeah poop. It's happy poop happy person happy life Exactly. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt just right down. We'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. Merch coming. <laughs> not not actually though, so maybe. Eventually. Yeah. Is, so, I mean, it's not time to talk about merch yet. Let's. Me, <laughs> exercising is one of those things that it's definitely like, oh, you know, like I have to go do this. Don't be that person. Don't make it a punishment. It's just like the food. Be like, the person who, this. yeah, I'm like, I get to exercise today. And I get to be I'm healthy. I'm the, good. The good. type of person who exercises, who works out. And also, don't do workouts that you don't like. Yes. There's no Very point important. in that. Yeah. Don't if force you yourself to do you anything. Out. If you don't like cardio, Except, like, don't try and run a 12 minute mile because you're going to hate it and you're going to not want to go to the gym. Yeah. Try to do a mile walking, jogging. Just don't, I love jogging. But don't you know, time yourself if you can't. If you like do it. rowing, row. If you like playing basketball, play basketball. If you like cycling, go for a bicycle ride. Do if, the things that you love to do. Like I, I know, um, one of my friends he enjoys killer ab workouts, and that's all he does at the gym. Sweet. He does like the ab machines and the ab. I mean, he has a great chest, and but everything else is very weak. He should work on something else. If you're listening, but, Josh, I'm talking to you. But there are some ab exercises that you can use to work out other parts of your body, I'm sure. Yes. So, you know, if you can find those that are also working out his abs, but also working out other parts of his body, he would be happier Full in body his workout. workouts. Yeah. yeah. But, obviously, he doesn't want to lift weights. He doesn't want to... Squat, do ever. Squats, and, you know... But, I don't know. It's, yeah. But it varies to person to person. Try different things at it's the what, gym. Yeah. And have a have a buddy too. Have an accountability oh, it's partner. So good. And yes. I love going to the gym with Keelan, with my sister, because it's just more fun. And then we can pump each other up at the gym instead of, you know, being alone. And if one of us is 
even if we don't talk to each other in the gym, if one of us is in a completely different area and we rode together, the other one has to stay there for an extra 20 minutes if they decide to stop working out. So it pushes you. <laughs> me. To stay there. It stays with <laughs> you to do another exercise or walk on the treadmill for another 10 minutes while you're waiting for the other person to finish. And then we give each other um, funny looks in the gym. Yes. And you, and you shouldn't go with somebody that's going to force you to leave, though. Like, if you're, if you're enjoying your workout and they're done... They can, I don't know, I feel like it would be rude to just leave, to, it'd be rude to yourself to just leave in the middle of an exercise. I went with my uncle once and yeah, well, we were that's done. Why he was like, you, well, time's up, You Let's need go. to be with a person, like, if you're just starting out, don't go with somebody who is Hardcore. a veteran, who stays in the gym for two hours. hours. Yeah, and that's not going to work out if that's you're carpooling too, yeah. together. Um and it's gonna it's gonna scare you too and the other person is gonna be like oh you know there's just a weird dynamic there that you don't want you you want to go to the gym with somebody in your circle your yes, caliber yeah. of person <laughs> is that your caliber yeah yeah which is it's so nice it's so nice to go to the gym with people i know it sounds weird but if you have a friend or a sister or a brother Going in that you both want to work on this together. Someone you trust. Yes. Oh, and it's such, it's so nice. It's, I guess I can't describe it other than nice. Nice is a nice word if you think about it, but I dwell on words. Yeah. No, it is. It's encouraging and then you're all there together. Again, it's about accountability and support instead of, you know, if, if you're trying to go to the gym and your friend is like, yeah, but let's go out for drinks, then, you know, <laughs> that's... Those are not going to work out very well. No. Good friend, just not a gym friend. Not a gym friend. <laughs> if you want to go to the gym and you're like, oh, when your friend's like, oh, well, I suck at going to the gym, so that would be great to do together. That's that's somebody that you want to be with. And somebody that's... Self-improvement. That wants to self-improve. Like, yeah. improve themselves and so you can improve yourself. It's good. It's important. Exactly. So, really briefly, we're going to talk about getting enough sleep at night yes oh it's the horror topic oh no everyone I, thinks it's sleep sleep is it is very important for your body if you get too much of it it can ruin your day if you get too less yeah. of it it can ruin your day if you get a perfect amount of it you could still have a terrible day but you'll feel good you'll, have you'll feel good energy. having a terrible day yeah exactly. yeah oh my dog <laughs> well, died well at least i'm energized and if you, <laughs> at least focused. i can work through it well the, the point i'm getting enough sleep and not too much not too little is that we're discovering more and more about how the brain works every day but what we have learned is that sleep allows your brain to clean itself like physically clean itself hmm. and that's really important for clarity of thought and energy um and then also they have found and i don't think it works the other way that if you are overweight you get worse sleep but it might you know be one of those things where it's cyclical mm -hmm. um but they have found that if you don't get enough sleep you tend to be overweight and the reason is because if you don't get enough sleep your body releases a chemical that says you don't have enough energy and there's two ways to get energy it's by sleeping and it's also through eating because of <sighs> caloric intake so if you don't have enough sleep at night your body will tell you to eat to compensate for that and if you don't, your body will just retain everything you eat. Exactly. So yes. your metabolism, is, your metabolism mm. is affected. Um, your just everything daily like life thrown even, just, out of whack. Even so, the materialistic things like how you look, your acne. When you don't, oh, yeah. oh my exactly. gosh, acne. When you don't get enough, gotta get your beauty sleep, often yeah. beauty rest. It's actually a beauty rest. You need to sleep for how, how long? So adults, eight? they recommend between eight and nine hours. And for adolescents or young folk, it is nine to ten hours. Of course, again, everybody's body is different. And babies so are sleep schedules, for 16 like school. hours. Yeah, babies <laughs> sleep forever. And well, they also don't blink. Adolescents. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I learned that this year. <laughs> Wait, what did you learn? Like share, share. So babies don't blink. Well, they do. They blink very infrequently because they have wet eyes. They have very wet eyes. Well, I'm learning. I, every time I blink now, I'm noticing it. So the world goes yeah, black for a little second. They blink ah. about four times an hour. So you can't yeah. win a staring contest with a baby. That's why they have like those big eyes, you know, when they stare at you. 
They're like, uh huh. That's why when you give when it's like babies give you creepy, baby eyes. Yeah, there's baby eyes. They don't blink. So oh, that's, that's such kind of Im- a tangent. That's important information. I did not know this. It was so it was baby, like a what? So moment. fun fact baby of the day. Are rare. <laughs> fun fact of the day. So get enough sleep. Again, if you can function on seven hours and that's what you need, like do you? But don't act like you can survive on three hours of sleep every night. No, you can't. I mean, you school, can't. Like, not gonna happen. What about Actually, you'll school crash. and homework and all that stuff? Like, school is takes up time and homework takes up a lot of time. We will talk about time Chores, management. existence. Oh, and time a, management in is most important. In a future episode because okay. you, Coming have, soon. You, have time tw- you have 24 hours in a day, so you have to partition off, like... Working out does take time, but you have to prioritize that. And sleeping Meal takes prep time. takes time. Sleep takes time. But you have to decide what is important, what is going to help you live a more fulfilling life, and abide by that. Abide by a schedule. But and even work. when it comes to sleep, like you should schedule your sleep. Because if you don't, it might not happen. You end up watching YouTube videos. Again, get in the habit of sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blue light filters are good. If you put on a blue light filter, you can look at your phone as much as you want, right? Blue light isn't affecting your sleep. Yeah, so I do have one on my phone, so it turns the screen like orangish red, and you should do that for your screens if you're working into the evening. But I also have a rule that before bed, no screens. So at least half an hour, shooting for an hour to even an hour and a half before you try to go to sleep. No screen time, you're not staring at anything, your mind can relax, you can read a book, like a physical book, so obviously not like a tablet or anything, but that can help you get to sleep, because if you're staring at a screen before bed, it's going to be Energized way more week. difficult. Sure. Yeah, and that's because your brain interprets that light like sunlight, and it keeps you awake, and it's not... Really? Yeah, it's not letting your brain wind down, your circadian rhythm. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. You're staring at the light. Sun, I, I looked like, into the light and now Look I'm blue. Light. The yeah. sun and sets for back. a reason. Exactly. And, you know, our bodies interpret the sun setting. So if you can make the sun set in your own house before bed. <laughs> your phone putting it down. That is sun ideal. Setting. Yeah. It feels mm-hmm. like yeah. that. No matter how many vibrations or buzzes go off, it should be fine. I know the Queen of England might have died and you would need to make a meme, but it's it's fine. Sleep is more important. Yes. Yeah, you you always want to get those last minute things done before bed, but don't do that. Um, some people make the the their list of things to do the night before, and that's like a relaxing thing, like writing it down on a physical piece of paper because you get all of those thoughts a onto lot of the times, paper. You don't yeah. have to ruminate on it; it's already done. And, and you'll remember it in the morning. You're not it. Yeah, you, laying in bed you like, oh, it. what do I have to do tomorrow? Yeah, because that's really bad. It's really stressful to have to think about everything you that you have to do the next but day. But to wake up in the morning, that's what I do. I write down everything I need to do in the morning and I'm, why I need to wake up. And then I usually wake up at a certain time. Exactly. And I yeah. ruminate on it. I keep thinking about it. And you, then yeah. when I fall asleep, I wake up earlier and then I'm ready for the day. Well, you shouldn't be alarm, ruminating I, on the things that you need to do. It it's should help stressful. you get to sleep, and then when you wake up, you already have the list of things to do, so you don't have to worry about it trying to go to sleep. Oh, well, then I guess I followed half of that advice. <laughs> I, I followed <laughs> half of to, it. Good something enough, to right? work on. Okay, so I hope that this was... I hope that this was helpful in setting and accomplishing health and fitness goals into the new year. Next week, we'll be discussing vocational goals. Those are career goals, um, success in hobbies, especially side hustles and money-making hobbies. That's important. Yeah, really fun stuff. That is fun, actually. That's exciting. You should definitely watch it. If you made it this far, good job. You should make a habit of watching these or listening to these. Yeah, a healthy habit. I mean, it's a nice fox on the screen, isn't it? I like that fox. Anyway... So, if you like what we're doing here, please consider becoming a supporter of the show. The Fireside Chat Podcast is part of a new entertainment hub called The Fox Hollow. We'll have shows about money, gaming, music, legal comedy, and more on YouTube, and we'll post new Fireside Chat episodes every Monday. If you'd like to ask a question or submit a public comment to be shared on the podcast, please email us at thefoxhollowhub at gmail.com. 
And if you'd like to support the podcast, please donate to our Patreon at patreon.com slash thefoxhollow. Links in the description below. Please follow us on Instagram at thefoxhollow.yt. And if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. Also, if you haven't checked out Robinhood yet, you definitely should. Robinhood is an online investing and banking app. They give the power back to the people by not charging fees or commissions when you go to buy and sell stocks. Use this referral link to get you started. Share.robinhood.com slash S-C-H-U-Y-L-G-7. You will receive one free share of a random stock and you have the chance to win some big name investments like Apple and even Berkshire Hathaway. Ooh. By using this referral code, both you and the listener and myself will receive a random share of stock. This is a great way to give back while also getting a gift in return. So we post new podcasts on Mondays. Thank you so much for listening and see you next week. Bye. Bye, though.